In this video, I'll be going over some tips and some cool things when tracking in winter. Coming right up. Hello and welcome to Eco Elsa. If you're new to my channel, my name is Elsa and I make videos to help people get outdoors. In this video, I'll be going over with you some cool things when it comes to doing tracking for animals in the winter, as well as some tips to make it easier and more fun for you and your kids. For starters, in this video, I'm not gonna be going over general tips to help your kids stay warm and active in the winter. I made a video about that, so down below, go ahead and click the link and follow that to my video all about taking kids outdoors in the winter for lots of tips to help you with that. This video I'm strictly going to be focusing on tracking in the winter time and a lot of cool tips that will help make it easier and more fun. So let's get started. Number one, looking for animal footprints in the winter. This may not seem like it should be very tricky because there's snow everywhere and all the animal footprints that land on the ground are going to show up unless they get covered over with more snow. But if you're looking for something specific or you want to find a nice variety of animal footprints to look at, this can get a little bit harder. So here are some tips to find good spots to find a lot of different animal footprints. For starters, if you live somewhere where the water freezes solid and you can find one spot for a wide area where the water doesn't freeze solid, chances are there's gonna be a lot of animals that know about that spot and they go to that spot regularly to get water. So from this, you can get a good variety of animal footprints. Maybe anything from otters and deer to raccoons and squirrels and coyotes, a nice wide variety of footprints to look at. And maybe even set up a trail cam. Um, if this is not available because all the water freezes solid pretty much, kind of like here in Minnesota, then the next best places to look for animal footprints to start is going to be trees that provide cover or an area that provides food. So maybe this is off the side of the road where there's roadkill or bird feeders or maybe it's a tree that has a lot of acorns or berries on it. You're going to find a lot of animals coming to this area for food. If you can't find a spot that has food readily available, the next best place to look is a place that provides a lot of cover. So this could be something like pine trees or it could be an area that has a thick stand of trees and brush and cattails where smaller animals might be trying to hide. These are all good spots to start looking for animal footprints, but the good news is since it's winter, you should be able to find some kind of animal footprint anywhere. As long as you just keep walking along the trail, you'll find something. Number two, the most common footprints you'll see in the winter time. Now, this is more specific to Minnesota and the Midwest region. This might differ for where you live in the country and if there's a lot more snow on the ground. But these are the most common footprints I tend to see in the winter time in all the different states that I've lived in in the Midwest. They are deer, squirrels, rabbits, foxes and coyotes, domesticated dogs, and human footprints. So it'll give you a good heads up for which ones to most likely prepare for. And if you are struggling with a set of footprints, maybe start with those first and then work your way out for what else it could be. Also make sure to keep in mind where you live in the country or even within your state. I live in the southern half of Minnesota, so it's not likely I'll see moose footprints running through the woods. However, if I was in the northern part of the state, I could keep in mind that a very large set of deer prints might actually be moose footprints. So good things to keep in mind to help you with identifying. Number three, domesticated dog or wild canine. So what's really cool about tracking in the winter is you can actually see a lot of great examples of footprints so that you can actually get better at comparing the differences between a domesticated dog or a wild canine like a coyote, fox, or maybe even a wolf. So that it can be easier for you to identify these footprints later on when they're not as clear because they're not in snow. Here are some tips to help you figure out if it's a domesticated dog or a wild canine footprint. It's really cool and fun to do, especially when you realize that you actually have a coyote or fox footprint. It's, you know, it's really fun and exciting the first time you get to properly identify those. So here's the tips. First, look at the shape of the paw print. If it tends to be more rounded in shape and it reminds you more of a wild cat footprint, except for it has claw marks, then it's most likely a domesticated dog. As domesticated dogs, have evolved over time, their footprints have tended to get more and more round. Versus a wild canine tends to have more of an oval-shaped footprint and a lot of times they come to a point because of their claw marks. 
the second factor to look for to see if it's a domesticated dog or a wild canine is the environmental factors. Look around. Do you see a set of human footprints heading in the same direction as the canine footprints? And do those footprints never seem to move a, any farther than a certain distance away from each other? Uh, are they about the same age looking footprints as well? And the third and final tip for trying to figure out if it's a domesticated dog or a wild canine is following the trail for a little while and seeing if at all do these footprints ever do direct registering. We covered this in my previous video on tracking, but basically what it is, is it's when the back footprints fall perfectly in the front footprints. So it looks like the animal was walking on two legs, even though we know this is not a cartoon and there wasn't a coyote running through the woods on two feet. What's really cool about direct registering is for the most part, domesticated dogs never do this. This is something strictly wild canines, cats, and deer tend to do. So keep that in mind that if you find at all direct registering and you aren't seeing any environmental signs of a human nearby that was walking the same direction at about the same time as the footprints, you're most likely dealing with a wild canine, which is super cool. So here we have a good example of human footprints with a domesticated dog because you can see the prints are aged about the same, so they were made about the same time. And also, if you take a look at the dog prints, they never really go farther than about right next to the human. So it gives you a good idea that these are in fact from a dog that was walking alongside its owner. Now to look at the prints themselves. It's hard to tell with this lighting because the lighting's making them look pointier than they are. But the back ones, if you look at those, those are pretty rounded. So you can see they look more rounded than, than uh, oval shaped and pointed. So that's what kind of gives it away that it's a domesticated dog if there weren't human prints here. So all of these things can help you with trying to figure out if it's a wild canine or a domesticated dog. Also make sure to follow the prints long enough that you feel pretty confident in your assessment because this will help you build off of this background knowledge in the future when trying to identify footprints. Number four, snow snakes and Bigfoot. What's really fun about doing winter tracking, especially if you have kids with you, is to tease the kids anytime you come across a ski trail, is be like, hey look, it's a trail from a snow snake. It's a special kind of snake that only comes out in the winter time. And usually they travel in pairs, kind of like two coyotes. And then anytime you see ski poles in the snow, point out the hole to them and go, look, that's a spot where the snow snake tried to put their head into the snow to grab a mouse and eat it. It's really, really fun. It's really amusing. And even if the kids don't believe you, they still get a kick out of it. So if you look here, we have a snow snake trail. Dun, dun, da. This snake must have been moving pretty fast trying to get some kind of mouse because look at all the divots for where its head slammed into the snow trying to get some mice. Poor snake, doesn't look like he caught any mice. Additionally, if you're in an area where there's snowshoers, you can also have fun with your kids this way by pointing out snowshoe trails and going, look, it's Bigfoot. Bigfoot was walking through the woods and they're a strong, independent monster. So they are making their own path through the woods and leaving big, giant footprints. It's really fun, it's really amusing. It helps keep the kids entertained, making up stories, following the Bigfoot trail, trying to figure out what Bigfoot was up to. And for whatever reason, Bigfoot likes to come out more in winter and he likes to make his own path and walk through the snow all on his own. He's a very independent Bigfoot, isn't he? Yep. So about 29 long and 10 wide, definitely Bigfoot footprints. So just keep that in mind that you can have fun with this outdoors. It doesn't have to be all super serious and sciencey. Have a little fun too, make some jokes, have some laughs, snow snakes, Bigfoot, whatever it may be. And the fifth and final thing to keep an eye out for when you are tracking in winter is uh, bird wing prints or wing angels. Now they sound really pretty and cool, and they are, but what they are is, 
you have a little squirrel or a bunny or a mouse hopping through the snow and wham all of a sudden there's an imprint of its body or a divot in the snow and then you have these marks of wings going across the snow as a bird is taking off and that's because a hawk an eagle or an owl uh, slammed down killed the whatever it was making the trail beforehand and then took off with their dinner for the day or the night so it's still really pretty and really cool it's just something got eaten and something's getting a meal it's part of nature but they're one of my favorite things to find in winter because winter tends to be the only time in Minnesota that we see these because you have the snow to leave behind a nice trail that can even catch imprints of feathers and what's really cool about these tracks is if you get really good at it you can actually try and figure out how big the bird is or what species of bird it is based on the prints they left behind. So how this is done is basically people are measuring the wingspan of the feathers that were left behind or they're looking to see if the bird left a specific takeoff pattern that is specific to the species of bird. There is a big difference between how something like a sharp-chinned hawk and a bald eagle takes off out of the snow. So just keep in mind that this is something if you find enough of these that you can practice with time doing. And they're one of my favorite things to find when tracking in winter. So unfortunately that is all I have time for, for today. So I hope you liked today's video. If you really liked it, make sure to check out my channel for some more stuff as well as subscribe and ring that little bell button. That way you can be notified the second my videos are up on YouTube. As well as I have tons of resources in the description below. So make sure to check that out. I have links to my videos I mentioned in this video, the one on taking kids outside in winter and the basics of tracking. Both would be super helpful combined with this video. So check those out as well. As well as there's a link to my email list that you can join and receive monthly resources for free that will also help you take your kids outdoors. I also am on tons of different social media platforms that I post tons of resources on so check those out in the description below as well. So as always I hope you all have a fantastic week. You be safe, learn lots, have fun, and get outdoors. Bye! Thanks for watching. See you next week. So on